SQs, the another data structure which is like in a similar kind we understood for arrays, for list, for stack. Now the picture is all about queues. Queue is a type of a list where data is inserted at the end and removed from the thread. So it is like it's first come first serve basis kind of a data structure. So everything which is stored in a queue it's in a particular order and the order is decided based on their occurrence and it is supposed to be in the way it is there in stack but stack does whatever is inserted last is accessed first and it will be deleted first whereas in queue it is a reverse criteria it follows a FIFO structure what does FIFO mean FIFO means first in first out structure so this data structure is peculiar with respect to queue so that's why it is called as a FIFO kind of a data structure the next comes is that queues can also be implemented like an array, a linked list, pointers as well as structures. So for queue, what should be the example which come in your mind? Think of a queue like the line at your bank where a first person into the line is the first person served. So it's like first come first serve basis. And as more customers enter the line, they will have to wait till their turn comes. So you have to wait in the back until your specific term, uh, turn is mentioned. Till that time you'll have to wait. So it is like a scenario, like it can't happen based on your occurrence. So it is something like you'll have to wait until your order or your turn comes. A queue is an example which is a first in first out data structure as I mentioned. Queues are uh, used to order processes submitted to an operating system. So if you know about the operating system concepts, so there are certain concepts like you have to submit some value and you have to get the processes done as per the order. In such a scenario, Q it comes into a better picture. There is also a Prince Pooler, simulation banks using queues to model scenarios such as customers standing in the line in the bank or the grocery store. So that all comes with the basic example which we come in our day-to-day -day life which is nothing but a queue. But queue includes various type of the operations like the way we had for stack. Stack included push and pop. Push was for insertion, pop was for deletion. Whereas in queue, the two primary operations involving queues are inserting into a new element inside the queue and removing a particular element from the queue. So the insertion operation is called as an end queue and the removal operation is called as the DQ. The NQ operation inserts an element at the end of the queue and DQ operation removes an element from the particular queue. So let's analyze both these operations deeply with respect to data structures. What is NQ all about and what is DQ all about? Let's analyze it with the respect to diagram. So let's move to our next thing which is called as the NQ. So NQ is nothing but the one which is used for inserting a particular element in a queue. So queues maintains two data pointers. First of all, I'll mention you about the pointers. The first one is the front pointer and the next one is the rear pointer. So therefore its operations are comparatively difficult to implement than that, that mentioned in the stack. Stack, it was very easy because we had a better picture like whatever it is there in the first will be taken uh, like first element or I could say the last element which we had inserted would be the element which could be accessed easily and will be deleted. So that, that's why there was no complication for understanding the stack element. Whereas for Q it is little difficult because you need to understand two basic terms over here which is the front and the rare thing. So what is the front, front part and what is the rare concept? So front is something but which is on the first thing and rare is the last element inside the queue. So for NQ operation, it follows a typical algorithm. So step number one is that it checks if the queue is full. How we get to know the queue is full because we already get a better picture if we have the queue with n number of elements and the elements has exceeded to certain limit which means that the queue is full. If the queue is full, produce overflow error exit with respect to developer coding. If you have the particular errors like it has exceeded the limit or something, then you need to produce an error and you have to exit from that loop. Whereas if the queue is not full and you can see there is space for some particular element, then from the rare front, 
So this is the rare element which is clearly visible in the picture. So increment the rare pointer to point the next element space. So my next element here would be element D which is added after element C. So this is the better scenario to understand about the Q structure. The next is understanding like how the Q structure would look after adding up the element to the Q location where the rare is pointing, we need to return the value as success. So once the element has, once the element is added, you need to just represent these elements in this similar format. Now here the front will be A and the rare which was pointing to element C will now point to element D. So this is what is the NQ operation in Q. NQ again I would like to repeat is nothing but a logic of inserting a particular element in a queue. So we need to keep this logic in our mind very specifically. Now let's moving on to the next that is nothing but analyzing about DQ. Starting with the DQ operation. So DQ operation is nothing but deleting a particular element from the queue. So again we will take a picture over here about understanding what is the front end and the rear end. So accessing a data from the queue is a process of two tasks. Access the data where the front is pointing and remove the data after access. So that is the complete operation or performance of DQ is all about. So here also it does first point that is to check whether the queue is empty or not from programmatical point of view. But if it checks that if the queue is empty then it will produce underflow error and exit. Why? Because if you are remove a particular element from the queue it is necessary that there should be at least one element present in the queue. If there are no elements present in the queue, it means that it will definitely produce the error and it will exit from the particular loop. So again taking a picture over here, understanding the front end and the rear end of queue. Here the front end comes to point 1 that is the element A and rear end is nothing but element D. Element D was the element which we enqueued right now. So this is the exact scenario of what is my queue is looking for now. Now if I check now my element is uh, the particular queue is not empty. It has four elements in it. Then if the queue is not empty access the queue where the front is pointing. So my uh, queue is pointing to the front part that is nothing but element A. So I will remove this particular element. So that is the process of DQ. And now my queue will be in such a way like my front will be pointing to element B and then it will call for element C and then element D. So increment the front pointer to the point which is next to the element which was pointing. So it, the element which was pointing to the front end was nothing but element A. So I will increment it to element B in such a way that my Q will look like front is pointing to element B and then comes element C and then element A. So this was about the front end and the rear end of a particular queue. Now this would give you a better picture like what is this front end and rear end all about. But there is this typical format which is observed in JavaScript like there is a syntax which is taken with respect to queue. So let's move to our code base where we will analyze the basic syntax in JavaScript for understanding the queue data structure. Let's move on to our code base. Now this was our code base. Here we have a queue folder but now there is no file associated to queue because we are starting up with a new uh, code. So here this would be my queue.js. So this will be the practical implementation to understand the logic of queue with respect to JavaScript. So here I'll start with the function say function and the initialization of queue inside the constructor. So here inside queue, I will take the first element that is nothing but the data store, which would be an empty array. So this is data store as an empty array. After enclosing data store comes the parameter that is NQ, the way we did for start. We had pop and push. So in the similar way, we'll have NQ and DQ. So this dot NQ equal to NQ and this dot dq equal to dq okay i'm done with two parts 
After this comes the next pointers which would mention for Q that is the front and the back end. So I'll say this dot front equal to front and again this dot back equal to back. So I'll take these two parameters. So front mentions for the first element in the queue and the back mentions for the last element. I can even take this back as the rare end. So I can even say that this dot rare, which is nothing but the last most point of the queue. But now I'm taking it as back only. So now after initializing this view, I would take another parameter inside the constructor for the queue. That would be this dot to string and I'll call for the two string function. So that would be two string. After this comes the empty parameter which will empty my queue. So I'll say this dot empty equal to empty. So I'm done with the queue which is it includes NQ, DQ, the front end part, the back end which is nothing but the rare end, two string character to mention the queue in the string format and empty character. After this I'll show you the logic for NQ and DQ. So NQ was nothing but inserting an element. So first of all, I'll take a comment which says inserting element in Q. So that is done with the operation of NQ. So I'll say function NQ. I'll take the parameter as element. Now inside that, I will take this dot data store my data store is empty for now so i'll push my element so i'll say dot push i'll take the element parameter over here so as it takes the element in the last order so we need not specify which should be the position of my element to be added automatically the element would be there in the last part of my queue that is nothing but the rare end part so that was about function nq the next comes is the function dq so DQ is nothing but removing an element from Q. So this would be function DQ. Function DQ. And after that, I'll take the logic over here. So I need to delete a particular element. So I will just say return this dot data store dot shift parameter. Okay, so it will just shift my particular element from one part to the other part. So this was like shifting your next most element. So if, if you remove an element from the queue, so that would be the first element which would be removed and the pointer which was pointing to the first element will now go to the second element. So this was about NQ and DQ for declaring the function which is like say front. So these set of functions will be common if you implement a particular queue with respect to JavaScript. So next would be function front. So I'll say function front and here I will say return return this dot data store and it will it should return me the first part so i'll say return this dot store and the zeroth value of my element so that will give me the front end and on the other hand if i want for the back or the rear end so i'll say function back and i'll take the parameter here so i'll take return this dot data store and it will return the value of data store minus one so it will say this dot data store dot length dot length minus one so this was about back character now how to get a particular length so length is calculated very easily in q with the number of elements present in it so once you get the back end, so that is the rear end, that will be calculated by keeping the length parameter and removing it by minus one. So that will give you the parameter like, yes, this is my rear end in the queue. So this was the complete understanding about queue, like what is queue all about. 
In the next chapter, we will implement this JavaScript structure the way we had. We will call for these functions over there and there we will create a sample demo of queue. So how a queue is created and how they are implemented with the help of JavaScript.